So guys, I'm here to see a young lady from the UK. You know me, I'm always promoting the diaspora coming back home. And I do so because I feel as if we are the game changers. We are the ones that are gonna change Ghana. And when you hear this story, when you hear her journey of how she moved from the UK to set up her business here, to set up her company. And when I tell you, Rain, that is the name of the company and we're here at the distillery to see how it's all done and to inspire you to come back home to Ghana and do something. This is a young girl, she's not even 40 yet, but she's doing things. Come and join me. Welcome, welcome. Oh my God. Yes. You like, have arrived. I have arrived. This yes. Is, this is amazing. Honestly, I'm just. So, we're doing a tour at this distillery. Yep. Where rain happens. Everything. Yes. Rain happens here. Yes. So, where are we going first, Emma? So, we are going to start with the admin block. Okay. Um, I just want to introduce you to my senior star. Okay. Mr. Stephen Pong. Yes, madam. Good. Hello. Afternoon. Hello. So this is Kweku from Pong. Nice to meet you. Nice. So what do you take care of here? Basically your freshness manager, okay. take care of farms, take care of distillery, the workshop. Okay. Basically also about sales. Okay. You know, your farm, with the produce that comes out. We, we are basically I'm in charge of Okay, it. so you're in charge of the farms. Is he the one that's going to... No, okay. so he's operations. operations. Okay, yes. okay. So he takes care of operations okay. primarily. Um, they also call him Baby Last because he's the newest member exactly. of the team. Aww. Everyone calls me mum. Can you believe oh, I know. I haven't... I can't I've believe had, that. I've had no children. Yeah. I, I can't believe that. Yeah. Ghanaians and mum. Mum, yeah. mama, yeah. Uh, yeah. mama gun. Yeah. Hey, mama gun too. Yeah, mama wow. gun. Uh, madame, small yeah. madame. I have so many names. <laughs> Next person for you to meet mm -hmm. is my right-hand woman. Oh, wow. She's the director of HR. Okay. Good afternoon, madame. Hello, this is madame. Jemima. Jemima, nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. So HR, you're in charge of all the staff, everybody. Yes, please. She knows everybody. Yeah. She sees everything. Wow. Yes, she's the third eyes eye. and ears. <laughs> Nice to meet you. This is okay. the last office in the admin block. Okay. Cephas. Cephas. Nice to meet you, Denta. Nice to meet you. So this is our finance manager. Oh, the cash man. The cash man. <laughs> <laughs> Fantastic. Perry as well. Perry. Yep. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you, Perry. Oh, really? Oh, good stuff, I hope. <laughs> so what are you in charge of? What do you do? I'm in charge of the... Uh, Systems and your network team. Okay, so IT technology. IT yeah. Okay, okay, fantastic. So this is the distillery. Yep. Where the magic happens. Where everything happens, right? Absolutely. Okay. So come through. Um, these are two of the guys who run this place. Okay. Sylvanus, aka QA. QA. That's his name. Oh, QA. Wow. QA. Everybody's on code names here. Oh really? <laughs> QA. Everyone's here on code names. Nice to meet you. And Nana Kwame. So Nana Kwame is our, our head distiller. Okay. QA stands for quality assurance. So oh, okay. It's, they're very much a tag team. Okay. Yeah. Fantastic. Absolutely. This is brilliant. Okay. Ahridia. Ahridia. <laughs> sugar organic, cane. Organic sugar cane. Wow. Thank you. So wow. This is, this is where it all starts. This is, um, we'll go to the farm and okay. you'll see, you know, where and how it's planted. Okay. So how many acres for the sugar cane? 
50 acres of sugar cane. 50 acres of sugar cane. Yeah. Wow. So we have two harvests a year. Okay. Um, so yeah, about six months, essentially. Six months. Um, and yeah, we have to look at how much sugar you get in the sugar cane. It's called the bricks. Okay. And when you check the bricks, and really Nana Kwame should be the one <laughs> telling, telling a lot of this, because okay. this, is, this, is, this is my main guy okay. in the distillery. Okay. But when you check the bricks content of the sugar cane, which is how much sugar, you can actually calculate what the alcohol percentage of the rum will be when it's made at the end. So what, what, what are we looking at at the moment for bricks? Uh, 17. Oh, wow. That's the highest we've ever had. Okay. So when we started, we were maybe getting 10, 11. 10, 11. I just started with 13.2. Okay. When, it, when it got to 13, we were quite happy. Okay. So this year, when it got to 16, 17, yeah. then it was like, wow, okay. How does it get to 16, 17? How does it go up? When it's like uh, the rain season and the okay. dry season. Okay. So when it's dry season, then the breaks is higher. Yeah. Wow. And when it's rain season, but you, you get a more liquid. But the person, you know, the yield will be, it's the small. bricks will be small. So you have, we have okay. to find a balance wow. between the yield and the bricks. And how much sugar cane, Ahridi, are you using in the product? Like, as a total, like this, like yeah. how, how many? A day is seven tons. Seven tons? Seven tons. But the machine can operate up 20 tons a day. In eight hours. Wow. So when people ask me what I do, yeah. I say I run a grass to glass business. <laughs> yes. Because sugar it cane is a type of yeah. grass. Yeah. And then the glass being the bottles you get okay. at the end. So this is where the sugar cane is crushed. Okay. Sister, are you cool? <laughs> Sister to say. Yummy I do my And so now we sugar cane no crush that no crush it. Okay, so what happens here? Here we put into the crusher machine the sugar cane. Okay. Then the crusher will crush it. Then the uh, end product, that the waste, will pass through this belt okay. to the dust bin. Okay. Then uh, we sieve the sugar cane liquid here. Okay. Through this pipe to the distribution tank. This is waste. Okay. Like okay. Okay. That. Okay. 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 And it passes through here. Okay. Sister. And it goes where? It's going, it's going. It's going, it's going, it's going. <laughs> it's going somewhere. Wow. <laughs> and then it goes through here. Yes. So this is our fermentation tank. Oh. So this is the first step in making alcohol. Okay. Any type of alcohol, it's always fermented. Okay. So and does everyone use sugar cane to make alcohol? No. Okay. Different types of alcohol use different okay. raw materials. Okay. To make rum, it has to be based with, on sugar cane. Okay. Um, you can use different sugar cane products. So we are using fresh juice. Okay. Um, some molasses. distilleries will use molasses, molasses okay. which is usually oh. sugar. Yeah. Right. Okay. of processed sugar. Okay. Um, some will use a sugar cane syrup. Okay. But we are actually growing our sugar cane for the purpose of, of making the alcohol. Rum. Yeah. So this is our fermentation tank with a capacity of 4,000 liters. Okay. So normally a full production a day would be about two. That's 8,000 for a day. Wow. And then before we add the yeast, we need to check the breaks level of the breaks is before we add the yeast because the yeast will convert the sugar okay. into, alcohol. Into, alcohol. into alcohol. So normally three to four days three it will be ready days. and then the breaks meter will be checked and then it will be zero before you can distill. We have a meter to check it to see how the breaks is. So when it is zero, then there is no sugar in. But when you check it and then it's maybe 0.5, 0.6, there is sugar in the meat sugar. to meat. So as Nana said, we add yeast, mm -hmm. but we've also been experimenting with wild fermentation yeah. where okay. you don't add any yeast. Okay. But it will still ferment under the right um, conditions. Temperature or, okay. Exactly. Does it yeah. have to be heated? So what happened? Like what temperature? With the, with the, with the, with the rum that we are using, uh, the yeast that we are using, yeah. it's uh, just a hot yeast. Okay. Uh, different yeast types have a cold one. Okay. But right now, the one that you're using is, is okay. Okay. The heat uh, is okay for us. Fantastic. Okay, so what, what happens after? Let's go. Mm -hmm. So you get low wines. That's what it's called. Um, yeah, so that's the product that comes out of the fermentation okay. tank which then comes into what we have here, which is, and be careful, because it's, it's very hot, yeah, yes. Um, so this is our pot still. So you can see, oh. you can see the low wines turning into wow. rum in here, um, bubbling away, very hot. Oh, yeah. So it's then condensing, going up here, 
evaporating condensing going yep. up here um, and, and then coming out the of condensation here. Condensation tank. Exactly. Yeah. This this is a huge investment, Amma. Hoy. It this is. is a huge investment. It is. So we we make a few products. Okay. Um, so you've seen the sugar cane. Yeah. We also grow cashew. Yeah. And uh, when a cashew nut grows, you get the nut, but you also get an apple. Okay. And that apple is usually thrown away, especially because it deteriorates very quickly. Okay. We use it to make brandy. Oh. So we also have a cashew apple brandy. Oh, wow. So what you see here in front of you yeah. um, is aging stock, which is both brandy and rum. And when we, again, there's a lot of innovation that we like to try and explore with. So with our rum, some of it we are putting into barrels that previously had brandy. So again, oh, that's giving changing. that little um, the taste. <laughs> exactly. Okay. Um, some of it we are using just um, completely new barrels and just, you know, figuring out different products, trying different things, different taste profiles. Um, so I'm going to show you some of okay. our some of our finished products. Okay, yay! As well, so I'm so excited because it's been a long time coming. I saw it at yes. Black Star Line Fest. Yeah. From a distance, I didn't actually okay. get to feel it or touch it, but I can see it right yes. now. And it's, it's whoa, this is rain. This is rain. Oh my God! Such beautiful packaging. The logo. Why rain? Why the name rain? So. Essentially what I'm trying to create here, everything that you've seen, everything that you're going to see is I'm trying to create a place and a community where everyone feels royal. Wow. So everyone that works here, everyone that comes and visits us is royal, feels royal, is treated as if they are royalty. Wow. And what you will see in the iconography mm. is, is African royalty. It is. Um, quite specifically Ashanti royalty. Okay. Because right? you are Ashanti. I am. I'm an Ashanti babe. <laughs> So um, I can see the Ashanti stall, our stall. Mm -hmm, I can Sidia. see, yep, I can see um, the crown. Yep. Wow, I can see the crown. Mm -hmm. I can see the, the sword, right? What is it? What's, what's this? Yeah, so these are porcupine quills. The porcupine. Mm -hmm. Yes, the porcupine, mm -hmm. um, Asante Kotoko. Yes, of course. Yep. Um, the horns well. as well. So the idea is for those who understand where this comes from, you'll see it and you'll go, ah, I see, I see, I see yeah. the whole, I see. But if you don't, if, you, if, if this isn't your culture, you would still see it and think, oh, that's a nice bottle. Yeah, absolutely. Right? That's kind of how I've designed it. This is beautiful. But why alcohol? Some from the UK mm -hmm. come to Ghana mm -hmm. to do alcohol. What did your parents say? Ha. Oh, yes. <laughs> sit down, oh, sit down, let's talk. <laughs> yeah. Um, Can we take this off? Yeah, yeah, okay. I think we should. It's, it's hot um, and we're away from the production. Okay. So how's my hair? Fine, okay. beautiful. Thank you. <laughs> um, so yeah, it's, it's not something that I, I ever dreamed of doing. Um, I'm a child of the diaspora. Yeah. I was born in South London, yeah. specifically. South London girl. South London girl, whatever, the, the, for the good and the bad, yeah. <laughs> maybe. But I'm, a, I'm from South London, and, um, but I'm Ghanaian. And as a child of the diaspora, going back home is always somewhere in your mind. And I think it always has been, you know, my parents never intended to stay in the UK. And my dad attempted to come back a couple of times. Unfortunately, he's, he's no longer with us. Yeah. But the last time um, he came, he actually came to establish a farm. Oh, wow, okay. So I, there's definitely an element of walking in my father's footsteps and trying to complete his legacy. Um, but I think the tipping point for me came about four years ago. Okay. Um, it might even be five at this point. But I had been running a business in the UK for about 10 years. Done quite well. It was a social enterprise. And through the work that I did, I was headhunted by the London School of Economics yep. to do an executive master's. So uh, they gave me a scholarship to complete wow. the program. Um, and as I was on this program and I was learning about innovation around the world, some of it was in Ghana, actually. Okay. Yeah, some of it was in Ghana, but almost all of it was being led by white men. And I was like, number one, I know that 
there's innovation happening in my country yep. by Ghanaians. Yep. I need to find those people. Mm -hmm. And number two, I need to be one of them. Wow. So that was the tipping point for me. I was like, okay, do you know what? I've done, I've done, I think I've done a lot in the UK. Um, and maybe it's time to do something in Ghana. So that was the tipping point. Um, I started putting out feelers within my network to say, you know, I want to go, I want to come home. Yeah. This is what I'm good at. Um, I'd done quite a bit of consultancy work, strategic consultancy specifically. So I just kind of started throwing things out, you know, through my networks. Yeah. 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 Just throwing it out. Um, and then end of 2019, year of return, year of, return. of course. Yes. Um, it was actually through my brother Kweku, who you know. Yeah. Um, he was like, okay, there's this agriculture business in MIM um, that needs a strategy consultant. Can you go have a look um, at the business and, and see what you can do? So I then told my mum, I said, okay, mum, I've got my first gig in Ghana. Um, it's an agriculture business in MIM. And she was like, MIM. Ah. Where, where, where in Ghana is Mim? What is, what, uh, Crombe, no, no. Yeah. And that, so we had, to, we had to look at a map and I was like, okay, well, it's here. It's, you know, 450 kilometers from Accra, et cetera, et cetera. She was like, ah, a Mim, a <laughs> Mim. Didn't, didn't say it right. <laughs> I didn't say it right. I was like, Mim, a Mim. She's like, a Mim. And you're on a McCall school. Oh, wow. And I was like, ah, yeah, a Mim. Oh, my goodness. So my mum finished her secondary education about 10 minutes from here. Oh my goodness. Wow. Um, which obviously I didn't... Do you know what? Sometimes I feel like some of these stories and journeys are quite spiritual. Um, I interviewed Bridgeview, mm -hmm. um, the CEO, mm -hmm. and he said, you know, the area, Akosombo, where he's got his... The Bridgeview, he never knew that that's where his family was from. Mm. And he just happened to build this. And then afterwards, he's like, the parents are like, this is where you're from. Mm. So sometimes I think it's, it's very spiritual. God is leading you to a place where your mum actually schooled here. Yeah. So then she became more comfortable, right? Yeah, or I think it just, it made me want to ask more questions, okay. which I did. Okay. Um, and that's the role of a consultant anyway. Yeah. I just didn't expect that those questions were also going to be about me, wow. right? So, um, so then, okay, I wanted to understand more um, about my mum mm -hmm. and about Imim and about her experiences here. So I, I always knew that essentially my mum was the first woman in my family to go to school to finish secondary oh. school. I'm the first woman in my family to finish university. To finish university. That's, that's incredible. Absolutely incredible. And um, so my mum schooled here. And at the time that she schooled here, like I say, you know, she was the first girl. So it wasn't, it wasn't a normal thing in my family at that time. Absolutely. Um, so what she would do on the weekends, she was helping her mum and her grandmum, so my great grandma, yeah my grandma and my great grandma yeah. farm. So they were farmers. It's in my blood. Wow. So like wow. you're saying, in terms of sometimes you don't quite know Absolutely. where you're walking or Honestly. why, but there's, there's a reason mm -hmm. that's bigger than you. Yep. So I knew that from my dad's side, yeah. my dad came back to Ghana to, to start a farm. Yeah. Um, and then I had to then delve further and further into my mum's history as well. So my mum, came to school here in Imim, mm -hmm. about 10 minutes from where we are right now. And on the weekends, she would help her mum and her grandma. Wow. So Your my, yeah. Yeah, my grandma, my Your great grandma, grandma farm as well. So they were also farmers. And um, she would get produce. I think it was mostly oranges. Okay. And she would go and sell them outside the sawmill just wow. the next building to this wow. building she would go. So the first time she came here to see where I am now, you know, brand owner, CEO, all of these things, she was, and I was like, did you ever imagine that you would be sitting in this house in this way? And she's like, no, it's, it, she was a little girl, you know, she was 14, 15, selling oranges outside. Oh so when I am in the field and I'm meeting my farmers, I see them and I see me and I see my mum and I see my grandparents. And it means that I can't possibly engage 
with those women and men as though they're anything less than me. Absolutely. Which I feel like is often the expectation of agriculture and farming mm. and farmers mm. is, you know, the work that farmers do is one of the most important and powerful things that we can do as human beings. They literally feed us, Absolutely. they keep us alive. You know, agriculture is not seemed sexy. It's mm. not seemed as um, a good job to do. But how important do you think agriculture is to Ghana, to Africa in general? It's the lifeblood. It's the lifeblood of Ghana, Africa and the world. And like you said, agriculture and farming isn't seen as sexy. But rain is super sexy. Mm -hmm. It right? is, yeah. Rain is super sexy. And this is the point, you know, you saw it at Black Star Line Fest. Yeah. People have seen it in other places. Yeah. Um, we in are, the UK as well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We're, we're in the UK. Um, we're looking at distributions in different parts of the world. And people see the product, they see the brand, and they're like, oh, this is beautiful. It's sexy. It's all of these things, right? And I want people to have those feelings, and I want them to enjoy the product. But I also want at least some people to scratch beneath the surface and start asking questions. Mm. OK. How was this done? Where has oh, it come from? from? Yeah. It's made in Ghana? Yeah. Really? Oh, so how is rum made? Sugarcane? Oh, OK, so farmers, agriculture. Wait, so what? This is an agricultural yeah. product? Yeah. Not everyone's going to make that journey. Some it's people true. will be too drunk. <laughs> <laughs> Talking about drunk, this is what, 60%? So this, <laughs> <laughs> this particular um, product, so our baobab and hibiscus rum, mm -hmm. I don't have a favourite product. I love okay. them all equally. Okay, I was going to ask you. Yes. Okay. I don't have a favourite product. I do have a favourite ingredient. Okay, which Hib is? Hibiscus. Okay. Because hibiscus in Ghana, Sobolo, yes. Nigeria, Zobo, yeah. Caribbean, Sorrel. Yeah. It's, for me, it's like the flower of the diaspora, wow. right? And I think it's really powerful in how hopefully it can start conversations and connect us together. Um, so the baobab and hibiscus rum is 39%. 39, yep, 39%. Um, our spiced rum is 40%. Okay. Our aged rum is 50%. Ah. Ah. <laughs> <laughs> it's 50%. 50%. Um, and then we've just taken um, some fresh white rum off the, um, off the still uh -huh. as well. I don't know if you want to try it. I'm going to try it. It's 66%. Is it, was it 66.25 today? I'll try it, but I'll try it maybe after the interview. <laughs> <laughs> this, okay, so tell me about the spice rum. Like what, what goes into the spice rum? Sure, so um, everything that we've tried to create is, everything we've created, we try to embed it in Africa. Mm. So whether it's Ghana or it's another African, African country, country yeah. right. So the spice is leading, and usually I like people to taste it and tell me what they can okay. taste. But the spices leading in our spice rum are, um, we've got some coffee, cool, cool, wow. of course, because of course. Yeah. If, it's, if it's from Ghana, we have to, yeah. we have, to have a, nod, a nod to cool, cool. Um, calabash nutmeg as well. So we know of nutmeg in the world, but the calabash nutmeg specifically is, is West African. Mm. Um, so yeah, really just leaning into so many of the beautiful, incredible, tasty things mm. that we have coming out of the continent that aren't always attributed back here. So hibiscus, again, in the UK, people drink it as tea. And yeah, it's, it's you know, true. It's yep. Hibiscus tea. Yep. But actually, it's indigenous to West Africa also. Um, yeah, and so just telling some really cool and interesting stories, I hope. I love this. It says, spiced rum born in Ghana. This is indigenous, made in Africa. I'm encouraging everybody from the diaspora, Ghana, on the continent, wherever you are, to start purchasing and buying rain in bulk. You can buy it in wholesale. You can buy it for your weddings, your anniversary, whatever it is, let's support our own. We need to support our own. We need to be making sure that we have products like this that we are proud of. And trust me, I'm so proud of Amma. As a young girl from the UK has moved, set up, the challenges that she, she hasn't even, we haven't even started talking about some of the challenges that she has faced to set this up, but she has done it and that's the main thing. And that's why I always encourage you guys to come back home and do something. Amma, tell us about the alcohol industry. Um, obviously, a lot of us know about Ciroc. Um, you know, a lot of people buy it and we want to make sure that this alcohol is on our lips and we buy it as well. Tell us about the industry. Yeah, absolutely. So, you know, I never dreamt of 
running an alcohol brand or rum. Um, really, the decision to focus the business on this product came from market research. Okay. Um, my team will tell you, all I do is ask questions, why? Why and how, mm. right? Everything that we do has to be data driven. So as I started to look at the market for rum specifically, I recognized that rum sales in the last 10 years are literally just going up and up wow. and up. So in the UK specifically, last year, rum sales overtook whiskey for the first time in history. What? And you know the UK. They love their whiskey. They love their whiskey. They make a lot of the world's yeah. whiskey. So for rum to be selling more than whiskey, wow. you have to then start questioning what is going, going on. on yeah. And you know, I think you mentioned some other brands, yeah. Ciroc. Um, there's lots of other brands that have done incredibly well. Um, Ace of Spades, yeah. AU in the UK is apparently um, a, a unicorn at this point, so wow. worth a billion dollars wow. potentially. Um, and I, you know, I, I studied all of these. And I think the one that I studied the most that gave me probably the most inspiration um, is a whiskey brand from the US called Uncle Nearest. Have okay. you heard of it? No. Okay. So Uncle Nearest Whiskey was founded by um, a black woman, African-American oh, woman. Okay. Her name is Fawn Weaver. Okay. And um, she uncovered the story of a man called Uncle Nearest who taught Jack Daniel how to make whiskey. And she learned this story and then decided to create a uh, whiskey uh, brand uh, in uh, his uh, honor. Wow. It's currently the fastest growing American whiskey brand in history. Oh. She's turning over $100 million a year and she's like, I'm going to be multiplying this over time. Oh my goodness, so that is the industry. So last year I went and met her for the first time. You know what's interesting as well about the story of Uncle Nearest is people know of Tennessee whiskey. Yeah. So Jack Daniel is Tennessee whiskey. Mm -hmm. Uncle Nearest taught Jack Daniel how to make Tennessee whiskey. What makes Tennessee whiskey what it is, is the fact that it's filtered through maple coals. Wow. We've been filtering water through coal in Africa for years. So it's believed that what makes Tennessee whiskey is actually based on African wow. culture, techniques, practices. So she was already very um, enthusiastic about the idea of this young woman, mm. you know, um, with a distillery in Ghana. So she was quite enthusiastic wow. to meet me. Um, I don't think she was necessarily more enthusiastic than I was to meet her, but <laughs> yep. she was very welcoming. I've actually been there twice now. Wow. Um, I've met the, uh, I think it's the great granddaughter of Uncle Nearest, wow. who is the master blender, multi award. Like, it's incredible. My Basically, goodness. it's incredible. And what is possible, um, I think, is, is endless. Sis, how important do you think um, it is for us diasporans to come back and invest and build? I think the diaspora coming back to the continent is a vital element in what the future of Africa has to be. Um, I'm building a global business. The fact that I have global experience is really key to that and really important to the successes that we've already experienced. I also think that for me, the successes I have experienced and I'm very early at the beginning of my Gosh. journey is also due to the way in which I've approached my return. I haven't come back believing that I am the solution. Yeah. I've come back knowing that there are Ghanaians doing stuff, yeah. right? And I've come to share what I have, what I know, but also to learn. And hopefully you'll get to meet some of my staff and, yeah. and, and ask them yourself, you know, what is, what is my leadership style? What is my approach? I can't, we've got almost 2,000 acres here, I can't run it by myself. And if I walk around thinking that I am the big I am and I don't need anybody, then nobody's going to help me and nothing's going to get done. And so it was really important to me that in establishing my leadership here, that everybody understood that they have responsibility. And with responsibility comes great privilege, but also comes, you know, a weight. Yeah. And I take my responsibility incredibly seriously. I recognize that there's at least 200 families in this country whose livelihood is dependent on this business. Absolutely. And every one of us that works here has to shoulder that, um, which can be challenging. Yeah, and I, and, and I wanna talk about the challenges because there have been a lot that have moved, that have built and have returned, mm. right? 
and they have gone through frustrations. Mm -hmm. They have gone through um, a business where some of them have been robbed of their mm -hmm. money. Um, mm -hmm. There was even one woman recently that came to build a house, sending the money to her brother. I don't know if you saw that video. I've seen this video. And there was nothing there. And she has spent hundreds of thousands of pounds. How do we stand firm in those situations? And how do we try and help those who are like in that situation at the moment thinking there is no point of helping the continent. There's no point of helping Ghana. I've invested, I came, I got burnt and I'm going back. So for me, um, and I hear this often, what you're saying, and I also hear people say, ah, if I'm going back to Ghana, I have to go and start my own business. I'm not gonna go there and work for somebody, right? That's the mentality that a lot of people yeah. come here with. And I'm like, have you ever run a business in the UK where you can register a business in the same day, where you have electricity constantly, where you have roads, yeah. where you have running water? Have you run a business there? No. And yet you think that if you come to Ghana, you shouldn't come and work for a Ghanaian because why, they have nothing to teach you? And for me, and I'm not saying that this is obviously the story for everybody that yeah. has, has, has you know, experienced hardships because it isn't, but I'm just speaking of sometimes what I feel to be a harmful rhetoric that some of us come back with. And I was doing business in the UK for 10 years and everything that I learned has been applied to this business. And people complain a lot about staff, staff, anywhere in the world is the hardest thing about running a business. Yep. Finding the right people to, to support you and help you build a vision. Yep. Everybody's got their own vision. So why are they going to you know, support yours? I don't see a lot of those challenges as being unique to Ghana. I see a lot of those challenges as being unique to business and human nature. Right. Um, and I can only speak of my experience, but I think the approach that I have taken and the approach I've seen others take to coming back and leading from a position of empowerment as opposed to colonization has been key for me um, and is why I feel every time I'm here and I'm around my staff I feel empowered because I'm empowering them right. and it's mutual and that for me is what keeps us going. So can we go and look at the barrels? What's inside? How long does the alcohol or whatever's inside stay? Yeah, there? absolutely. So there is alcohol. Let's let's walk through. Okay. Um, let's let's stop here for a moment. Okay. Just sniff this. <laughs> <laughs> what what are you getting? Fruity. Absolutely. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Super fruity. So what we have um, mm. in these barrels on either side of us Look is. More apples. Apples, Ooh. yes. So cashew apple. Okay. So we've got. So what we're aging in these barrels is um, a combination of cashew apple brandy. Okay. So cashew apples are usually a byproduct of growing cashews. Right. So when you harvest um, cashews, yeah, it comes with a little apple. Okay. As well, and usually that apple is discarded of because it deteriorates very quickly. So within like hours of um, of, of collecting it. It goes so, off if you're not quick enough, okay. Exactly, yeah, it goes off very quickly. Um, but we're using those cashew apples to make brandy. Wow. So every barrel has its own unique name, number, wow. um, personality. You know, some of these barrels have rum, some of them have brandy, some of them had brandy and then have rum. Okay. Some had American whiskey and then have rum or then have, like, so creativity, innovation, um, experimentation wow. are all things that we have to employ here to create the best possible products. How long do they stay in the barrel for? So every barrel, again, As is different, quite, yeah. quite unique. Yeah. Um, we are releasing our first aged rum this year. Wow. It will be four years old um, and it's going to be a limited edition. So there will probably wow. be... Uh, we're still finalizing the barrel strategy okay. but probably between one and two thousand bottles and that will be it ever of that wow. first batch that's going to come out of here this year um some people have already pre-ordered bottles i need to pre-order my bottle then <laughs> <laughs> what some people pre-ordered bottles last year what yeah and i was like look it will be ready when it's ready i'm not even going to give i'm not even going to give you a date when it's ready, ready 
it will be ready. Do you still want to part with your money? Yes. Yes. <laughs> okay. Because it's a limited edition. Yeah. Um, it's the only rum coming out of West Africa. Well, yeah. it's, it's definitely Ghana. Yeah. Um, it's a single estate. That, do you know what? That's the other thing. Like, rum is not typical Ghanaian alcohol. Yeah. We have our palm wine etc that's like our indigenous mm -hmm. why did you pick rum and why did you want to make rum in ghana because rum we know caribbean jamaica those are the people that drink rum but you've decided to do rum in ghana why yeah it's a really good question um so yes there isn't a lot of rum coming out of africa mm -hmm. as a continent yeah. actually um definitely not from ghana. ghana absolutely not yeah um but if you look at how where and why rum was made it's inextricably linked to West Africa. Okay. It was people primarily from West Africa that went to, to the Caribbean yeah. and made rum. And so um, it is believed, it's widely believed that the practices that were used to make rum in the Caribbean actually started here. Wow, okay. And then, so, you know, when you told your family, your brothers, president, all of that, that you're coming to do this, what was their thoughts on you doing I know president would be happy. Yeah, <laughs> president, shout out, shout out big bro. Hey. Um, do you know what? I think for all of us, for me and my siblings, um, I have an incredible family, you, you know? You I, have a, I have a really incredible family. I'm really lucky to have them. Um, and, and all great in their own ways, like Quirkle's doing his thing, like you, you, everyone's doing their, playing their part. And no. you haven't even met my mum yet. I haven't. Listen, I'm where we are all born hey. from. Um, <laughs> and I've always, I've always been lucky to have their support and their encouragement. I think in my journey in being in Ghana, I really feel a lot of power from them and others who have come before us. You know, I have, I have, I was raised with two older brothers and a younger brother. Yeah. We had a sister who passed away. My dad, who I also said passed away. Passed yeah. away. All of those people are with me. Absolutely. You know, all of those people, their story and their journey starts here. Um, my mum finished school here. It's all of those, all of those decisions and all of those actions that happened, not just in Ghana, but even specifically in in this town of Imim, that have led me back here to this moment right now. I don't think it's possible for them to feel anything other than pride wow. yeah. and yeah like I it's being an entrepreneur can be a lonely journey yeah. and on a day-to-day -day basis there's a lot of things that I have to do that nobody else even has a clue that I'm doing, doing them yeah, absolutely. but I still feel their presence with me in, in everything that I do. So next up, we're going to go to the farms, right? We are. Okay. But before we go, okay. I have something for you. Okay. okay. All right. Um, you didn't actually get to taste. I didn't get to taste. Any of the rum. Mm. Um, because oh, I'm scared of how I'm going to feel. And we haven't finished <laughs> the interview. And I want to be stable. Yes. And, um, <laughs> you know, some of our products are quite, you know, high in alcohol content. Yeah. So not a great idea. Um, necessarily. However, mm -hmm. this is for you. Oh! Can I? Yeah, please okay. do. Yeah, yeah. Oh my goodness. Look at this package here. This is beautiful. So you've got um, a gift box of two of our flavoured products. Oh, love it. Um, so you've got one bottle of our spiced rum. And also a bottle of the baobab and hibiscus rum as well. Like I said, the aged rum, limited edition. Limited. It's on, on pre-order. If you so, where, where do I pre-order it? Online. Where yeah, do I go? On our website. You can pre-order it on our website. Mm -hmm. What's the website? It's rainrum.com. Rainrum.com. That is the website. Okay. Perfect. This is yes. beautiful. Thank so you so enjoy much. In your and then own do you have time. smaller bottles? So do you do? Yeah. So we have um, like smaller gift boxes as uh -huh. well. So this is one of our smaller gift boxes. Okay. Um, can I open it? You can. Okay. Yes. So we have miniatures. Oh, nice. Yes. Are you scared of this one? No, no, no. I'm not scared. 
be scared. <laughs> How can I be scared? You I'm can't scared. be scared. No, 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 no. Yeah, but I should taste like a little you. bit, though. I should taste a little yeah, bit. Yeah, let's do that. Yeah. So, we're going to start with the white rum. Okay. So, this has come fresh off the still wow. today. Um, and it's 66.25% alcohol. I can handle that. You can handle mm. that. So, this is our white rum. Mm -hmm. So, I recommend having a starting with a sniff. It's, uh, it's powerful, 66.25% alcohol. Ooh. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> hey, I this, found me him. No! This is, this is why we blend, we, wow. you know, so we blend our rum, we, um, some of it is flavored, some of it is brought down in alcohol content wow. as well. But, so this is literally straight off of the still. But I wanted you to... <laughs> <laughs> I wanted you to, to see how this it comes nice. when it's raw. It's so nice. we don't actually currently sell the white rum at all, okay. but that's yeah. part of the process. So I think we will then go for the baobab and hibiscus, okay. Okay, which is probably our most unique blend. Okay. Don't think there's another one on the market. Wow. Um, so we'll, we'll try that one, baobab and hibiscus. Mm -hmm. So when you smell, Mm -hmm. um, have your mouth open slightly. It helps with the aromas oh, circulating. Okay. Oh. Um, <laughs> that smells lovely. Mmm. Okay. Oh, I love this. Okay. Mm. What are you getting? <coughs> oh. Hey. Fruity. Okay. Then we'll move on to our spiced rum. I'll let you have a try of that. Yeah. And then we will end with the pièce de la résistance. Hey. Is, that, is that the word? <laughs> the word of the French ones, the French people say, pièce de la résistance. Oh, yes, whatever, um. whatever that is. Me and will just so many words to Too, because this one is the most unique. So people are like, ooh, yeah. baobab, yeah. hibiscus, what is it? Smells nice, Smells all beautiful. of these kind of I things. I the colour as well. Right. And then you've got people who just love spiced rum. They're used to drinking okay. spiced rum and they'll be like, oh my gosh, this is the best spiced rum I've wow. ever tried. So, you know, and I've purposely created products that speak to different segments of, of the people. market. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So everyone has a favorite. That's yeah. what I would I say. Well, so far. Okay. So this is our spiced rum for you to try. Okay. There you go. Sorry for the left. It's all right. This one's also... When it melts in your mouth, it's very soft. It's very mm. light. Smooth. Yeah, very smooth. And you don't think of an alcohol that's 40% to wow. be as smooth as that. Very smooth. Like, it felt like it was melting in my mouth almost. Mm -hmm. Okay. Love this. Love okay. this. Love this. <coughs> then we'll end with a sample wow. of the aged rum. Oh, wow. Um, so this will be our first limited edition wow. release Amazing. of aged rum as well. Amen. So are you ready? Okay, yep. Different experiences. Yeah. Every single one of these is a different experience. Yeah. So people ask me, what's my favorite? And you can't pick. I'm like, it depends on the day. Yeah. You know, it depends on the occasion, depends on the time. So this is one that's not out yet. Absolutely. Ooh, even smoother than this one. That's 50%. Wow. Sis, this is, whew. To try it. You need to literally everybody needs to try this. This is amazing. Wow, I'm not allowed to drink. Let me put it down. Let's <laughs> we'll, go to the we'll, farm. We'll drink more later. <laughs> yeah, we'll there's, do there's later. There's time for that. Should we go to the Let's farm? Go to the Let's farm. go.
So we're at the sugarcane farm. Yeah. And as you said, they're all women that are working. Mostly. My goodness. Yeah. They are Mostly digging women. out the sugar cane. Yeah, yes. so 60% of farmers in Africa are women. And Aduse was explaining how difficult it is like to get the sugar cane out. You said seven men came yes. and they couldn't do it. They couldn't do it. The first they did it. They quit? <laughs> they quit. Oh my goodness. How are the women doing it? These are strong women. They are very strong. So when I took over, one of the first things I did was increase their salaries by 50%. Wow. And I had to do that while simultaneously cutting our losses at the farm also by 50% because the work that these women are doing is incredibly hard. Um, farmers typically in Africa don't get paid a lot. And so for me, while you see the beautiful packaging and the, you know, the fancy products, at the core, the question has to be, how do we return value to farmers? How do we ensure that we can still grow um, delicious, beautiful produce that feeds us, that we all need, in a way that isn't exploitative, right? And this is why we've increased how much of the work that we do um, through mechanical means. Um, and there's still a long way to go. There's still a lot more money that we need to make yeah. to be able to do things exactly how we want to. Um, but it's it's a process. So let's let's go meet some of our some of our ladies. Aiko! 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 Mide ho ho abra, abba. Who here am I? Sorry, you didn't see me. Yembe mo, yembe bo amo. Yeah, but mommy. Hey, Mister Duse, you just also mo na I hide it. My confused. Hey, do my, do my. Yeah, go so. Ma, and they say then I owe you no. What is the what's the sign and I watch it on? And so what is she saying? Ten ten. Okay. Hey, mu mu adi yo. Mu ya adi ankasa. Wow. Enye kwa. And they almost started to do my best time, babe. So one of the things that Aduse was very adamant on is to ensure everyone has boots. Yeah because that's not always the case. Okay, yeah. yeah. Um, so there are, there are things that we've implemented to improve, but it's still not where I need it to be. Yeah. Yeah. But you've started off well. I mean, this is, this is great. This is great. And to one day, chucha, like omu chucha. The ladies cut themselves. Wow. <laughs> and then uh, remove the uh, leaves. The leaves from it and then uh, bundle it into 10 piece. pieces. Okay. This knot that they're doing yeah. is something that is incredibly difficult mm. to do. The skill involved. Mom, it's over to my chair, Miss Yes, you know. Okay, Brana, chair, Miss. So, so, yeah, my baby. I'm <laughs> 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 Okay, my Okay, my Okay, my Okay, my 
มาอ้ยแม่โคมันพักเดี๋ยววันนึงเดี๋ยวโอ้ยแล้วจะเชิญหรอตัวคุณอาบอืมฮึซูวิอาโนะเพจะ How heavy is it? Can you put that on your head? m i t r i s o Yep. Ma, m o m a m e n t o m a g o Hey. m o f a n t o m a g o m u k o s a Okay, now find your way through all of this with that on your head. Oh, me a gangster. y e m w a w o m a m e w a m e u n k w a n k o baby. When you look at the product rain, how the product is. Beautiful, tastes good, doing well in the market. But when you look at the process of how it's made and the people behind it—not just the CEO, but the people that are actually on the ground working—I mean, I've just carried the sugar cane. I carried two. Some of them are carrying three and four on their heads, just to make a product for you. And so it's a whole holistic process which they're doing. It shows that. The product is not just about one person; it's about the whole community coming together to build. And for me, I'm so impressed. And we also need to make sure that we are supporting women in agriculture and supporting the likes of Amma, who is behind this, who is encouraging this, who is. She mentioned that she's even increased the women's pay by 50%, and that's encouraging. We need to make sure that we are paying our farmers the way that they should and the way that they deserve. It's hot. I'm sweating, as you can see. So you can imagine them in the sun each day, trying to get the product out to serve you. This is just part one of Amma's story. If you're interested in getting involved or knowing more about what she does, please follow the email details below. I can't wait for you to see part two of her journey. See you next week.